Sam from Sheridan Computers. So just browsing some forums and seeing an interesting post. Um, now we've got this exact same setup in our office, so it was easy enough for me to uh, explain how to do it. So I just wanted to uh, address it quickly, just so I could leave a link to this video. If we uh, head across to the forums and take a look at them ourselves. So this is over on um, Lawrence Technology forums. Um, this one's put, hi Tom, I know the Windows world is not for you, but I now have a technical glitch. Using Windows DHCP, I need to set up four VLANs and have them fully functional. Pointing me in the right direction would really help. And what the one is, um, VLAN 1 is a native VLAN, then VLAN 2 for Wi-Fi, third VLAN for video, and for v VLAN for voice. Um, so as I say, I'm just answering this um, because we have this exact same setup. In fact, if we... Uh, Switch over and take a look at our server. Um, so on our Windows server. I'm the owner of Sheridan Computers. Sheridan Computers is an IT support company based in Manchester. I formed the company back in 2002, so I've been doing this for quite a while now. While mainly we work with companies that don't have their own internal IT staff, even if you do, we're quite happy to work with them if they need an extra pair of hands or if you have a project coming up that you need assistance with. If you'd like to hire us, head across to our website at sheridan.co.uk. There's a hire us link at the top of the page. If you follow this link and fill out the form and leave some details on what you're looking for, once I've reviewed it, I'll get back to you with whether we are able to help. While you're on our website, you can find out more information on my company, some of the people that we deal with, as well as the services that we offer. If you have a technical question, but maybe you're not quite ready to hire somebody yet, or maybe if you just want to pop along and say hi, feel free to head across to our forums at forums.sheridan.co.uk. Our forums are completely free for anybody to use. I do try to spend as much time here as I can and answer any questions as they are posted. On a final note, if you find this video useful, please take the time to hit the like button. Also consider subscribing to the channel. And if you hit the notifications icon, you'll receive notifications of any new videos as they are released. Now quite often, I'll leave uh, links to any products or services that are reviewed in the description at the bottom of the video. If you use these said links to purchase the services, then you're helping support the channel. Any support that you can give towards the channel is greatly appreciated as it does take quite a bit of time to produce this content. Let's get on with the video. You'll see I have various DHCP scopes um, assigned on our Windows server. So under our 10.0.0.0, which is voice, the address pool for that, uh, it's standing out 10.0.0.100 to 200. Um, now, as you can see, um, these are some phones on our local area network, which are picking DHCP up from here. Um, scope options. I've got the router as 10.0.0.254, which is my PFSense box. DNS servers are pointing at PFSense. Um, and this is a TFTP service for so the phones can um, find the provisioning scripts. Then we have the native LAN, which is on 10.1.10. .10. Um, the wireless LAN scope. So the pool's 10.1.20. And um, the scope options, my router set to 10.1.20.1, which is PF sent. My DNS server set to 10.1.10.254, which is the uh, domain controller, um, which we need for the Wi-Fi clients to be able to um, resolve the DNS properly. Um, and then we've got a VM network on 172.16.69.100. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you've got your scopes assigned. Um, that's literally as easy as doing new scope and following the wizards. Once you've got your scopes assigned, um, then it's a matter of configuring PFSense. So let's go ahead and have a look at PFSense. So you can see in PFSense under VLANs, I have my VLANs defined here. So my voice VLAN is 10, my VM VLAN is 69, um, and my wireless LAN is set to 20. So if we go into interfaces, um, voice for example, got the interface enabled, just give it a description. Uh, I've got it set to static IP address and I've got it set to 10.0.0.254, which if we head here and I'll look under my voice, 
the scope options. So the pool is 10.0.0, .0 .0, 100 to 200. None of the scope options, I've got the router set to 10.0.0.254 .0 .0 on the DNS. Which is my VLAN 10 on my Slovakia. So you can see VLAN 10 is sat on my LAN interface, so is VLAN 20 and so is VLAN 69. So, of course, we need to set up uh, firewall rules so that traffic can pass between the VLANs. Let me just go ahead and switch to that page. Okay, so you can see um, my firewall rules on the LAN. Um, I have it so that LAN machines can only access the internet between working hours. Um, but on the LAN, I've got it to allow anything from my wireless LAN into the LAN um, for that to work properly. On the voice, I'm basically passing all traffic on my voice VLAN um, and again on my wireless LAN. I'm passing all traffic there. You can restrict this down to your own needs. Um, I'm just doing this to show you how we've got it going. Uh, and on my VM network, um, we're basically allowing all traffic out of the VM and nothing in. Uh, and I've just got PF blocker rules on there as well. Um, so once you've set your firewall rules up and you're allowing traffic across your VLANs, um, the next thing you need to do is to set up DHCP server relay. If we go into services, this is on PFSense, of course, DHCP server relay, uh, DHCP relay, sorry. Now you'll notice I've got it listening on my VLAN interfaces. So I've got it listening on voice, VM, and I've got it listening on WLAN. So I don't need it on any other interfaces. I just need to listen on them. Um, I don't need it on my LAN because the Windows server is natively sending them out anyway, so I don't need DHCP relay on there. Uh, so listening on VLAN 10, VLAN 69, which is this VM1, and WLAN, which is 20. And as you notice, we've got destination server 10.1.10.254, which is my Windows DHCP server. Um, so once we enable this, you can't have DHCP server running on PFSense um, with this enabled. Um, but since our Windows box is handling all the DHCP, that's fine, and that's how we want it. If you're unfamiliar with uh, how to create VLANs in PFSense, then let's go into uh, Interface Assignments. VLANs. We want to add a new VLAN. Select the interface that you like to listen on. Give it the VLAN tag, a priority if you want. Um, or you can just leave that as it is. And put a description in, and that's pretty much VLANs created. Um, and as you can see, we have it working perfectly with the phones getting leases from the Windows server. Um, the wireless LANs getting leases from them. Our VMs is, that's not too active. But, um, so that's working perfectly. And I've not had to tell, I've not had to change the um, subnet masks or anything. Yeah, network. So if I look at my interface settings on my Windows box, I've got DHCP assigned. We're using a static address of 10.1.10.254 with a gateway of 255254, uh, sorry, with a gateway of 10.1.10.253, which is a PFSense box. Uh, and my subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. So I've not had to change any of this. Uh, obviously, my DNS is going to 127.0.0.1, so it's pointing back to itself for DNS. Uh, and then through DNS, I'm forwarding that onto the PFSense box. So you don't need to make any changes here. You don't need to make the Windows server aware of any VLANs or anything. Um, it will all just work. So 
So as I say, I just wanted to um, do this video because we, the post that I saw, we have the exact same setup and it was easy enough for me to just quickly uh, run through and explain how we're doing it with PFSense. Um, we're also using um, Unify switches um, and the Unify switches are auto voicing the Cisco phones, so I don't need to actually change anything there. Actually, we can quickly go ahead and show you how to do that. So I'm logged into my Unify controller. Um, I'm going to settings, networks. So you can see I have my VLANs defined here, so the switches are aware of them. Um, voice, for example, I have, just give it the name voice, it's set to VLAN only, and I've put the VLAN number in. So that's basically all you need to do. So if you're creating a new one, set it to VLAN only, give it a ID, and just create your VLANs that way. Um, once your switch is aware of it, then it should start working pretty well. Now with regards to um, the way we have our Cisco phone set, so if we plug them in, um, the phone itself will jump onto the voice VLAN, but if you plug like a PC or something into the back of the phone, they'll jump onto the um, normal native LAN. So if I quickly show you how to do that, um, one, two, devices, we we'll have a look at our switch. We've got a Unify 24POE here. Uh, anything that's lit up in yellow is basically uh, a phone. Um, they're 100 meg, which is why they're shown as yellow. Um, now, if we look at that one, for example, and I edit this port. Now, I've got this set up to LAN with VLANs. Um, and on the port, you need LLDP MED enabled. So it's set to LAN with VLANs. Uh, if I just have a quick look at that by going Manage Profiles. Close that minute. There it is. Uh, so I've created a new switch profile, LAN with VLANs. Um, POA I've left to do not modify. I've set my native network as LAN um, and my voice network to 10. And then we've got enable LLDP MED here. So Basically, that'll allow me to plug a Cisco phone in and the phone will just automatically jump on the right VLAN and it'll grab the uh, IP address straight from the Windows DHCP server and register with the phone system. It just saves messing about with config scripts and things. Um, so for that to work, um, that was only because under profiles, uh, under default, uh, I couldn't find a way to edit the default profile. Um, to add that in, so I had to create a new switch profile. Pull it back up again. Um, so I had to create a new switch profile called LAN with VLAN so I could put the auto voice in it. Uh, this all that exists here, uh, you can view it, but I couldn't edit it, so I was, wasn't able to put the voice VLAN in, so I just had to create a separate one for that. On any of my ports that do have phones, um, I've just assigned them this profile. Now, yeah, I could have gone through and assigned that profile to every single port, but we've only got a handful of phones, so there wasn't much point. I hope that helps. Um, let's say, it just I saw that post, and because we was doing it exactly like that, I just figured it was quite easy for me to explain, and it was easy to do it in a video. If you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.